I'm here with Van Eder. What do you do here at Khan Academy? Huh, I've done a lot of things. Uh, I've been here for a while. So uh, when I first started at Khan Academy, I was working a lot on the exercise uh, content. Um, made many of the, the math exercises that are, that are on the site today. And uh, then from that, kind of shifted into a software development role, really trying to scale our and ability. Just on the exercise users. side, for those of you who've been using exercises for many years now, you, you wrote some of the software that created a lot of them. Yeah, well, it actually, started with with you know with you when you when you first started with Khan Academy, the exercises were were things that you wrote as, as little JavaScript uh, things that generated questions, and that uh, carried on until very recently. And so, a lot of the work that I did was building more of these question generators that could generate you know infinitely many problems, uh, so that so that folks could get as much practice as they needed. Um, and then, so I, I built many of those, kind of following in, in your footsteps there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, more recently, we, we were looking at, at how to expand that because, you know, I'm one person. <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to build a lot of those. We were trying to find more people that could do that, but it, it, it required this skill set that was actually very difficult for us to find of, of software developers who were also, you know, good designers and good teachers. And, um, you know, we were looking to, to sort of scale that. So uh, more recently, I was, I was working on building software to, uh, allow non-technical folks to write questions. Um, and so about a year ago, I uh, worked on that um, and built out a little bit of team around that. And those uh, tools have now led to the fact that we have 150,000 exercises or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, it's grown pretty significantly since then, and, and the quality is, is much better than, than what I was building, um, you know, because we have actual, you know, teachers <laughs> uh, building this, not, not folks like me. Not <laughs> robots. Robots. You're not building robots to write the questions. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, there's actually some thought going into yeah. each one. It's not, it's not this machine-generated thing that, uh, you know, has this algorithm behind it. Um, yeah, and so uh, from that, I, I am now, uh, you know, an engineering manager working with a team of, of engineers to build, to build those things and, and many of the things that are on the site. And what does an engineering manager do? It's a lot of things. Um, so there's the, I guess, probably the most important part of my job is, is, you know, ensuring that the engineers that are on the team are happy and productive. You mentioned that a big part of your job is, you know, the engineers here, the incredibly creative folks, and kind of making sure that they're, how does that, what does that mean on a day-to-day -day basis? What are kind of some of the things that you do with, with team members to, to make sure that happens? Yeah, day to day, um, talking to them a lot. Uh, they're they're humans. They have a, a lot of thoughts, um, and and just understanding, you know, being empathetic to to their their you know their personal goals and their personal needs and their thoughts about um, about the things that they're building. I mean, there are what eighty people at Khan Academy now, and, and we're growing. You know, the the odds that me or, or you or any other manager at Khan Academy uh, has the best idea. Um, are you know one out of eighty because there are eighty people here. Like most of the ideas are not going to be ideas that I have or that you have. They're going to be ideas that come from from elsewhere in the organization. And making sure that um, you know I'm listening to the folks on my team. Um, and for me, you know that that means you know spending at least an hour uh, every week with everyone on my team one on one, just having a conversation about you know what their what's on their mind, what what their career goals are, um, what just sort of. You know, kind of picking their brain and, and making sure they're doing okay, making sure they're happy. And this is a, you know, when, when you imagine when you're, at least from when I was young, and I imagine what a manager does. Mm -hmm. I imagine someone who's like telling people what to do. Do this, do that. This is very different than what you're describing. Yeah, yeah. People don't like to be told what to do. Um, <laughs> I know I don't. And we hire really <laughs> smart people. And so, like, if I told them what to do, they would probably not do something as valuable as what they would do if, if we gave them a little bit more uh, autonomy. Um, and so... You know, a lot of a lot of it is is helping, making sure that, that people are are well aligned with with our mission. And I think most people that come here are. It's a, it's a great mission to be aligned with. Um, but I think you know, if, if if folks understand you know our strategy here and what we're what we're driving towards, you know, giving them kind of the, the freedom and the flexibility and the autonomy to kind of build the things that they think are going to be uh, most valuable. And, yeah, we've uh, we've thought about even renaming manager to supporter because it really is about empowering. Yeah, I mean, most of my job is is figuring out what's blocking people from from being productive and, and trying to remove those blocks. Yeah, and, and even just as you just mentioned, like the great ideas aren't gonna come from necessarily, you know, the hierarchy. It's, it's gonna come from anywhere in the sure, organization. Sure, sure. How you surface them and. Yeah, and, and we, we, you know, collectively have, have thought a lot about how to do that. And, you know, we have this process in place where anyone in the organization can can put together proposals. And, you know, a lot of organizations probably have something like that, a little suggestion box or something. But we take it very seriously. Um, and we, we wanna encourage folks to, to submit their ideas and, and then work on those projects. And uh, you know, so part of my job as a manager is really as a coach to help people do that. So there are folks who wanna 
you know, to have an idea, that want to, you know, surface that and, and you know, kind of push, nudge Khan Academy in that direction, uh, perhaps, and they're really passionate about it. We want them working on that thing that they're really passionate about because that's where we're going to see them, you know, really add tons of value to Khan Academy, tons of value to our learners. Um, and so my job as, as kind of a manager, as a kind of a coach, is to, is to help them do that. And maybe, um, maybe they don't have the experience of like writing a proposal. Um, you know, maybe if, if they didn't come from a startup where they had to write proposals and pitch uh, investors, you know, that, that's a little bit intimidating for them to write a proposal and, you know, pitch you on this idea. That I'm very intimidating. Yeah, I yeah, try to, I work yeah, on that. Yeah, well. Maximize my intimidation. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean. I mean, you know, <laughs> putting, putting together this proposal and trying to pitch it to, to you know, more senior people in the organization can be intimidating. Um, and, and as kind of, as kind of a manager, as kind of a coach, helping people, you know, you know giving them feedback on their, on their ideas, helping them craft that document. If, if they want, you know, I can sit down, work side by side with them to write that kind of proposal. Um, so really helping people, making sure that we are, you know, getting um, as much out of out of each individual's abilities as, as we can. You know, you have a pretty interesting story about how you discovered Khan Academy. As much of that as you as you would yeah, like to share. That goes that goes back a ways. I mean, we go back to when I was when I was in school. I didn't I didn't have um, I didn't have a great time in school. I actually didn't do particularly well in school at all. Um, you know, always got you know kind of C's and B's and C's, mostly C grades, in school, and uh, you know kind of had this this sort of uh, negative experience, I guess, with with the education system. Didn't didn't really think much of it, um, and you know did go to college, but uh, didn't do particularly well. Ended up you know failing some classes. Ended up failing out of college, um, and. You know, just kind of never quite understood why, because I felt like I was a smart person, but you know, somehow the system had just kind of not not worked for me, um, and kind of you know, system kind of failed me. Um, but I was I was lucky in a in a sense because this was in the mid '90s, and I I had a lot of sort of technical background. I, my hobby was you know playing with computers and things like that. And in the mid '90s, uh, with the dot com boom, it was pretty easy to to go out and get a job even without uh, having that that credential from a school. Uh, and so I was able to kind of. And start I, say, a I mean, you were, but in some ways, you were you were atypical. I mean, you you were sitting there building computers in your garage when you were in high school. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was lucky in the sense that you know my grades were really not that great, um, and I I, I kind of credit my parents. They may not have intended this, but they they kind of still gave me that space. They saw that I was like doing, kind of, I was doing you know things like building computers in my garage, <laughs> and uh, and they kind of let me do that instead of like pushing me on my grades more. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that that, that, that happened because I, I was able to learn or teach myself a lot. Yeah. Um, this is before the internet, so it's a little harder to do that. But um, yeah, but then you know that experience did allow me to you know to go into the to, into the workforce, which made a lot more sense to me uh, coming out of school uh, and or coming out of failing out of school <laughs> uh, and and build a career kind of doing uh, things with computers, um, both in the networking industry and, and software industry. And how, and how did you first discover Khan Academy? I mean, you, you created actually a, a pretty robust career in the networking industry. Yeah, uh, yeah. How did you stumble on Khan Academy? Yeah, so I was, I was working in the networking industry and then ended up uh, you know, starting my own company in the, in the networking industry and, and build a network performance measurement product. And uh, as I was talking to, to customers, I was having some difficulty explaining the value of my product because my customers didn't have as good a grasp on statistics uh, you know, as, as, I, as I had hoped. Um, and so in order to sort of understand the value of my product, I had to kind of explain some basic statistics to them. And I was having some difficulty like explaining to my customers what a Poisson process, for example, was. And so I was Googling, you know, how do I explain what a Poisson process was? And I found, I came across this video um, that, that you had made. Uh, and I remember and, that video. Yeah, it was it was very good. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy has really very clear explanations. You know, he seems to really understand how how to teach well, um, which was something that, that that was you know important to me because, uh, as I said, you know, school had always been this sort of weird thing for me. I never felt like I did particularly well, and I was always curious why the system didn't work as well, as well as it could. Um, and so I found this video, and I thought, wow, this is this guy's really doing some some groundbreaking stuff uh, and I checked out the website and I was like oh this is really interesting um, and started going through a lot of the stuff on the website and I realized you know I taught myself a lot of math in the intervening years but I, I hadn't really quite understood why I didn't do well in school um, you know I, I was getting you know B's and C's in math and then eventually when I got to calculus is kind of as, as happens with many people kind of hit the wall and started failing I failed calculus I think I think I took it three or four times and failed at each of those times. And I never quite understood why, because I felt like I understood the concepts. Um, but then when they would give me a problem to do, uh, you know, I, I, I fell short. And, and what I realized, actually, many years later, when I discovered Khan Academy, was there were these, you know, as you call them, Swiss cheese gaps in my knowledge. There were things that I should have learned back in eighth grade 
um, that I just didn't know, and, and you know, when I was expected to apply them in calculus, it wasn't the calculus that was tripping me up, it was these things from eighth grade that was tripping me up. And so I discovered that on, on Khan Academy and kind of went through uh, literally all of the content that you had uh, uh, back then, it was about almost four years ago, and thought, well, this is amazing. And uh, as I was going through that, I found a, a, you know, a small little bug on the website and reported the bug. And it, was ta it took me to, at the time, I think a lot of the, the website was open source. Um, and so I was able to, to actually look at the source code and um, fix the bug. And so I submitted a patch, and you guys accepted it. And then I, I got a little bit more involved and started submitting larger. A patch audio. is like a suggested code change. Yeah, code change. So I, I, I found the bug, fixed the bug, and then, and then submitted that fix to you guys. And, uh, and then I started, I started working on some other things um, and started adding some, some content uh, and submitting some, some content for you guys to, to add. And um, I, guess, I guess you guys liked it. Um, I, got, I got some emails. Uh, and then eventually you called me, uh, yes. which was kind of a surreal experience for me. Because um, so I felt like I. Oh. Well, when we saw, I mean, you submitted the derivative, it's still on our site, derivative intuition, which yeah. we said this person has deep understanding of calculus. Hey, <laughs> you didn't suspect that I'd failed it four times. <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. goes to show you actually clearly do have deep understanding of calculus, amongst many other things. You're now making videos on how, you know, semiconductors and transistors and whatever else works, and sure. anyone who watches those would recognize your deep understanding. But it was one of these things that you had, you know, I think what you said it was negative exponents that was tripping you up? Yeah, negative exponent rules. Um, exponent rules. And if you just had that gap filled, you would have probably aced calculus and maybe become a math professor or something. Yeah, I mean, I, this, this is weird. Thing. Like, I understood what a derivative was. I knew how to how to apply the power rule. But then as soon as you asked me what's the derivative of 1 over x, I had no idea what to do. <laughs> You're like, wait, how does this apply? But the power rule doesn't apply to that. That's, yeah, <laughs> but, no. Well, I'm yeah. glad you've taken this... <laughs> And, and what, you know, what kind of gets you up in the morning? What are you excited about Khan Academy, what you're doing? I mean, obviously just super passionate about the mission. Um, you, know, I, you know, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a very personal, visceral thing, you know, because as, as I, you know, the, the story we just talked about, um, you know, I felt like uh, school had, had failed me in some way. Um, and it was, and it's very much goes to that Swiss cheese gaps, you know, that whatever that day I missed in eighth grade on negative exponents that just, you know, kept following me. And I had no idea how to solve that. I had uh, a fantastic math teacher actually in high school, um, learned a ton from him. Uh, but he wasn't really equipped to diagnose that that problem that you know years earlier I'd missed this concept, and so I, I learned a ton in his class, and uh, but and, and you know learned a love for math, but uh, but also you know he's giving me C's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, couldn't do the work, um, yeah, and so and, and so knowing that that we are creating this resource that if it had existed back then would have completely removed those obstacles from me um, is very meaningful to me, um, and I you know I feel like I got very lucky. Based on just sort of my experience with, uh, you know, the tinkering that I had done and, and the applicability, you know, and, and the ease of, you know, being able to get a job in the, the, at the peak of the dot com boom, you know, without an education, like I, that was very lucky, I think, um, and I think most folks might not might not have that luck, and so knowing that, that we're building something that, um, you know, that that is going to help a lot of folks uh, who who could very understandably be in that situation, um, and not not get as lucky as I did, is is very meaningful. That gets me up. Yeah. No, well, it's an honor to work with you. Likewise. <laughs>